For new video and content added each week, click this icon at the bottom of your screen. Thank you for the support and thanks for watching. Hey gamers, what's good? Today I'm going to show you how to increase your Raspberry Pi storage capacity with a larger SD or micro SD card easy process. This process can be used to prep micro SD cards for other applications as well that require or work well with FAT32. In this process you will also learn how to clone your SD card which can come in handy if you are creating another RetroPi emulation station. For example, I have a 32 gig card for my RetroPie with all my ROMs on it. Well, I ran out of space. So I purchased a 200 gig micro SD card and now I want to use that one instead. This will work for any size SD or micro SD card, essentially skipping the entire install process again of RetroPie or disk image process, making it easier. That's what today's video is about, increasing storage capacity for your RetroPie. For today, I'll be using a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B. Again, you can use the software I'm going to show you to also increase storage capacity for other applications as well. So what's on the list of things that we will need? A class 10 SD or micro SD is recommended. Today, I'm starting with a 32 gig card that is my original and increasing my storage to 200 gigs, which is my new card. For you, it may be a different storage size capacity, which is fine. You may need an SD adapter or micro SD adapter and of course some software, which I'm going to talk to you about shortly and where to find this software. My PC has SD card access, so I can use the micro SD to SD adapter and the SD micro SD USB adapter. If you have a USB which has at least the same capacity of the SD card you're cloning, you can use that as well. Cloning your Raspberry SD card to the USB flash drive, then clone the flash drive onto your new SD card. This process does take some added time, but it can be done. Actually, that's how I did it the first time when I first cloned my SD card, I used the flash drive. Windows does not allow for FAT32 format for cards that are larger capacity than 32 gigs. So down below in the comments section is a download link to Ease US Partition Master software. Go ahead and stop the video so you can download the software now. Once the software is downloaded, I just dragged and dropped it onto my desktop. It should look like this, EPM. So I'm just gonna go ahead and double click it. Go ahead and click yes to install. Select your language. And you can see there is a pro edition. We'll be using the free one. And then accept. Now I already have this installed, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop here. Go ahead and continue to the process of installation. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and open up the Ease Partition Master. Go ahead and hit yes. Okay, so now it's open. I'm gonna go ahead and blow that up. These are the drives that are installed right now. Okay, so this is the 200 gig SD card and I'm gonna go ahead and insert it in the USB adapter. First, um, should probably get it in the right direction first. Okay, so now we're ready to move back to the PC. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and insert the USB with the SD card into the PC. You can see that it, the disk partition master asks you um, if you'd like to proceed because it now senses the SD card has been inserted. You go ahead and click yes so it can update. Okay, so from this menu here, you can see I have 
the unallocated 200 gig card plugged in right there. I'm going to go ahead and click that. If I right click, you might have the format option. If you do, you can click format. If not, then you can go over here. I'm going to click right there, right click, and I'm going to go to partition scheme. So from here, I'm going to right click and hit partition scheme. That's if you do not have the format option. Okay, this is where you can format from. Change that to FAT32. And my label will just, you can create a label if you like. I'll go ahead and just call that PI. Hit OK. To the left, you see that it says create partition. And now I'm going to click apply. Yes. Now I click OK. It's going to update. And now you can see it says Pi and it's formatted to FAT32. This card is now ready to receive the clone from the original SD card with the Pi image on it. Now from this point, I've just inserted my original 32 gig card from my Raspberry Pi and I used, again, two different SD card adapters. So if you don't have that option, this is where you would you would have cloned your 32 gig onto a flash drive and then from your flash drive onto your new SD card. So since I had both, both of them, I used the SD card adapter and then I used the USB SD card adapter. So now that I've done that, I have to click yes so the partition master will recognize that I've inserted a new card. And this one says 29 gigs, 14 gigabytes available. Okay, so from this point, you can see that I've inserted the old SD card with the Raspberry Pi original image on there. And it's gonna ask me to update. I'm gonna go ahead and update that. And you can see it's right there, it says JBoot. So this is the one I'm going to clone. So I have both my old SD card and my new one that I want to clone. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that, the JBoot, which is the old one, and I'm going to click Clone Disk. You can see it's already analyzed as complete. Next. And I want to clone it onto Disk 3, which again is my new one. You can see it says Pi. Clone will overwrite all data. Yes, it is a blank card and is ready to go. I'm going to optimize for SSD. Click OK. Clone disk 4 to disk 3. Now click Apply. One operation is currently pending. Going to click Yes. So this process right here is going to take some time. It could take an hour or more depending on the size of the card that you're also cloning. So I like to take this time to point out that, so what I'm doing, what we're doing is we're copying our old SD card from, it could be an 8 gig, 16 or 32 from your Raspberry Pi. We're gonna copy that by doing an exact clone onto our 200 gig. Now when we plug the 200, gig card back into our Raspberry Pi, it's going to boot up just like normal because it thinks that that 200 gig card is a 32 gig card in my case, or 16 or whatever card that you cloned. Now we're going to go to the Raspberry Pi afterwards because we have to give it a command so that it'll recognize um, that there's a 200 gig card and it'll use all the available space because if you try to put ROMs on the 200 gig card it's going to tell you that it's already full. Like on my case, it was already full, so it would, it would say the card is already full, even though I just put it on a 200 gig card. So by entering that simple command, it'll use all the available space up on the 200 gig card and thus expanding your storage. So from this point, we're going to go ahead and I'll 
stop the video and then once your cloning process is done then we're going to jump to the Raspberry Pi and I'm going to show you how to enter those commands. Hey guys just real quick I just wanted to point out that if you do have a micro SD card adapter but you only have one you can clone your original card um, onto a flash drive as long as the capacity is equal or greater value than the card that you're cloning. And then you can take the flash drive and use your SD card and insert your new SD card into your SD card adapter and clone the flash drive onto the new SD card. So that's actually how, again, I did that um, for my original uh, Pi application. Okay guys, the process is complete. You can see that it says one operation has been successfully completed and you can also see that there is an eBoot and a GBoot there. If we open that up you can see that there is now a clone and I did clone from disk 1 to disk 3. Now it says 57 here and 41 here um, because these are different size cards but when you open them up you'll see that there's 27 items From, for mine, there's 27 items, so you'll have a matching number there. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and just click OK. We can allow that to update, and then we can safely remove our cards from the PC. And then we're going to go ahead and insert our new card into our Raspberry Pi. And we're going to tell the Raspberry Pi to recognize the new card as well as utilize all of the space that's on the card. Alright guys, so from this point I've inserted my new SD card that's been cloned back into the Raspberry Pi and I've rebooted it and so far everything looks great, looks just like uh, the original card. Okay so once this actually boots up we're going to go to our RetroPie menu and we're going to select the Raspberry config. We're going to select advanced options. For me, it's option seven. It may be a different option for you. So from this next menu, I'm gonna select option one. Expand file system ensures that all of the SD card storage is available to the OS. And again, it may be a different option on your menu. Go ahead and select okay. I'm going to select finish and I'm going to reboot the system now. Okay, the system has successfully rebooted and now you can add all the ROMs you need to to your new storage capacity. Again, mine was at 200 gigs. So when I put this card in, it would not allow me to add any more because it kept the Raspberry Pi configuration is still thinking of that SD card as being a 32 gig card. So by entering this command, it's going to utilize all the available space of the 200 gig while at the same time keeping all the configuration of what my current uh, Raspberry Pi was before I cloned it. So this is a good option um, as opposed to adding all your ROMs and uh, your scraper art and just starting all over again. So I didn't want to do that. So I went with this option and, and for me it was much easier. So that's it for this video guys. I really hope that uh, this helped out. Yeah, if you have any questions or comments, just go ahead and drop those comments down below. As always guys, I appreciate you watching this video. Please hit like and subscribe. The support is definitely appreciated. And 
Don't forget to check us out on Instagram and Twitter at Henchman Gaming. Thank you very much and happy gaming.